the slow domestic and global economic growth, high risk of capital flow reverses, geopolitical tensions and inflationary pressure from structural impediments in the global supply chain threaten to destabilize Uganda's financial sector. Events in the external sector tend to happen in Uganda with the lag. So Russia and Ukraine are fighting today. We haven't yet felt the effect yet. The, what we are seeing today is from 2020. The lag has come, the, basically the chickens have come to roost for COVID. For Russia and Ukraine, that is for next year. There is a lag. Overall, systemic risk in the banking sector remained moderate in 2021, supported by the reopening of the economy and strong capital and liquidity buffers to cushion against shocks. At the inaugural Financial Stability Symposium in Kampala, Bank of Uganda committed to act with timely and decisive policy responses to emerging risks affecting financial system stability. So as long as you have government bonds and you have some liquidity challenges and you're a bank and you're eligible, Borrowing is automatic. Emergency liquidity assistance, on the other hand, as I've pointed out, is a last word. To access it, you must have exhausted your government securities, for example. A key downward risk to financial stability is the continued pass-through to domestic inflation of global shocks and the knock-on impact of the financial performance of households and enterprises. We've seen an increase in prices of some of the imports, energy, uh, wheat for some, because apparently we're importing quite a bit from, uh, from, those, from that region, uh, fertilizers, but the full impact of those, of that, if not this event, that in Russia and Ukraine will only come next year. We, what we're seeing is the, think of it as the appetizer of the impact. Charlotte Amoge and Dennis Sigoa for UBC News.